Hi everyone, my name is Lily Deboudian and I'm joined today by TJ Banasek, my colleague on the Sovereign Cloud Security team. Today we're going to talk about the new Threat Intelligence Workbook that's recently released in Azure Sentinel. To start, TJ, can you tell us a little bit about some of the use cases and, and key challenges that we're seeing today with Threat Intelligence? Yeah, thank you, Lily. Some of the challenges that we're seeing with threat intelligence is uh, an overwhelming amount of indicators that are uh, in different cloud workloads and environments. So the Azure Sentinel threat intelligence blade will show you how many indicators that you've ingested. Uh, if they are URLs, domains, sender addresses, file hashes, it'll give you a great idea of not only your first party uh, data, but also your third party data that you can onboard with sticks and taxi. The challenge is once you have this data is operationalizing it, and that's the challenge that we're solving with this workbook is uh, augmenting some of the advanced cybersecurity discipline and knowledge and um, showing you uh, not only that you have indicators and what the quality of those are, but also if you've seen them in your environment, right? So if I have a file hash, uh, threat intelligence would say this file hash is bad and, and there's value in that, but if you say this file hash is bad, and I see it in your endpoint logs, that would be something that I would care about as, as a threat within my environment. So as far as the use cases for using this workbook, there's a, a few primary ones that we go to. The first is for SecOps professionals. These are folks in your security operations centers, actively working with incidents and alerts, building automations, building alerts, uh, policing the environment in, in tier one and tier two disciplines. Uh, there's also a use case for threat intelligence professionals, folks in the tier three based teams that want to take it further and, and get a very granular idea of uh, who the threats are, developing the five W's, the pattern of life, understanding why the organization is being targeted and then proactively responding to. Um, and the third use case is for uh, consultants and service providers that would be uh, assisting uh, different organizations with security assessments and recommendations and, and consultation based services in security. So the value of this new workbook is the ability to not only ingest uh, your threat intelligence data and understand what you're receiving, which is what we had in our first version. Now you can analyze and hunt for these indicators within your workloads. Uh, the workbook is based in about 150 different threat intel queries and visualizations, so it's going to take those indicators, uh, let you understand what they are, the confidence rating, uh, how they are observed in your environment if they are seen, and also get an understanding of uh, where you're being targeted from geospatially, um, what telemetry is at play, and, and what assets in your environment are the most targeted. We have added a free text search, so it would be really confusing to have to do all that manually. So you can now, even without the knowledge of Kusto, do a free text search of an IP address or an indicator or a file hash, and the workbook will execute that and dynamically display. So dynamic display means we may execute 100 queries, but you're only gonna see queries and visualizations that have data. That way you don't have to look through blank panels. That's awesome. Um, that, that all sounds really great. I think why don't we jump in and, and see a demo in Sentinel? Yeah, absolutely. And and while that's loading, I think you've answered some of some of the questions I had. The, the dynamic display is awesome that we're only seeing data um, where we have results. Um, also good to know that this is multi-tenant, um, so through the workbook parameters, we can filter and see information across tenants. We can use the time parameters to filter across um, 30 days, 60 days, or, or custom time filtering as needed. Um, also availability in, in Azure Gov and, and regions beyond just commercial. Um, we're also integrating some of our third party tooling, um, which is awesome, so trying to maximize the, the amount of data that, that you can see through the workbook. So. With that, let's let's jump in and, and see it in action. Yeah, fantastic. All right, team. So in order to get to the workbook, I'll come into Azure Sentinel. I'll move from my overview down to my threat intelligence tab. Um, this is the first place to come uh, as far as viewing the feature blade and getting an understanding of what's ingested. Uh, this is where you would start your investigation and also look at the quality and the, the uh, quantity of your onboarded uh, threat intelligence feeds from uh, connectors, sticks, taxi, Microsoft intelligence security graph, or your third-party threat intelligence platforms. As we click threat intelligence workbook, it'll bring us into the new workbook here. 
And the first thing that you'll see across the top is a set of parameters. So parameters are ways for you to filter and create a custom report without having to do that in query. So when we've got about 150 or so different panels, you don't want to have to set a time range on each one of those. It, it just doesn't scale well. So the parameters across the top, when you set these, uh, the entire workbook will respond to that. The first thing that we have is a guide panel to understand what the workbook is. Uh, great as a helper panel uh, for the first time that you come in here and, and get an idea of what you need to do to onboard. Uh, after you've already done that, you can click no, abstract it away to get to the core of the workload. As Lily mentioned, uh, we do scale for uh, uh, cross workspace, cross resource, cross tenant, uh, multi-tenant. And when we do that, we use uh, subscription and workspace parameters. So I could do uh, one, all, some, whatever the interest is as far as looking at my data. Uh, I can also filter if I have several workspaces um, to break that out. Time range filtering, a lot of common defaults that we'll find in here. If I want to see data that's more active for response, I could look within an hour, within a day, a month. Uh, for today's demo, we'll just sit on two weeks. Uh, would like to call out that we've got a survey in there. Uh, super important for us to uh, really hear your thoughts and your opinions. So do click on this link. Uh, it is completely anonymous unless you want to give us your name. Tell us what you think. Tell us uh, uh, what we can do to improve and, and what things you want to see in Sentinel in the future. The basic layout of the workbook is three tabs. So we have indicators and gestion, which is going to show us um, how many IPs and files and URLs that we've ingested uh, over time is the display that you'll see in this first panel. So you get an idea of a baseline in this demo tenant. About 2,000 indicators is our baseline day over day for what we're ingesting. Few spikes to where things are ongoing, but pretty static. If we see that start to go up, uh, it either could indicate attack-based events, it could be a new tool onboarded. If we see it start to go down, that could be an indicator that one of the feeds may be down, uh, something as far as health checking. Uh, we can go in and look at any of this in raw data or export this as an Excel. Uh, all of the panels are like that, just to give you the, uh, the ability to customize it and move around. So this section basically is going to go through uh, about 10 or so panels uh, to get an idea of what types of indicators you have, uh, where they're coming from, what the confidence rating is, uh, and, and how to work with it. So very much uh, care feed maintenance and, and QAQC over your threat intel feeds. The next one is threat detection and hunting. So uh, this is a, a tad bit larger than the other ones. This is where the core of the workbook is. So you'll notice here that we have an indicator search field. Uh, I can put anything in there to free text search across about 100 different log sources and telemetry feeds in the environment, which is great. Um, if I don't select anything, it is going to basically wildcard. It's going to look for any indicator across any of my environments. So. Um, the top two are summary panels. They'll tell me about security incidents and alerts that have been generated from Threat Intel. So I can see that I've got a handful of them in here uh, that have kicked off. Um, average detection time by source is telling me where I'm getting the data uh, in this environment. Azure Sentinel has got some ASI built-in telemetry. We're using the Microsoft Emergent Threat Feed and also a, a taxi connector from Anomaly for abuse and ransomware IPs. As I start to scroll down, you'll see different uh, columns for IP address, URL, and domain. I've got a helper in here to show you guys what queries that are being executed. Note their dynamics. So while I'm firing off about 20 queries here, we're only going to see panels with data. If there is no threat indicator match, this section will come up blank, which is actually the, the desired state. Um, over here, you can see I am authentication match. Uh, this is the Azure Sentinel information model. So it's using uh, third party tooling, uh, mainly in authentication logs, uh, to uh, make a distinction to say if I see authentication logs and it matches an indicator, uh, show me the data here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of the panels, but you'll see that several of these different areas are displaying data. So VM connections, authentication logs, security events, Azure activity. Uh, so on and so forth. We're seeing indicators hit in several places in the environment. Uh, if I scroll down further, you'll see areas uh, like FileHash. FileHash doesn't have any matches, so the panel is blank. This is actually the desired state that the queries would execute and fire, and you hopefully would not see any indicators in your environment. 
So that is the look if you just want to see any matches in the environment. But what if you wanted to get a more targeted look? Say you had a thread IP that you pulled from another platform and you wanted to get an idea of uh, what it was or you know where you'd seen it. We're going to grab this example right here. We're going to add it in. And what you'll notice is all the panels are dynamically going to execute and start to search through your environment to say, in my threat feeds and all these different telemetry components, did I see this IP address in, in any place? So um, as it starts to come in, you see that that IP came through the Microsoft Emergent Threat Feed. Uh, it is related to an open incident, so we do have a Sentinel alert and an incident on it. Uh, it's related to a botnet, and we get a description of how an attacker is connected to MS SQL. So starting to really build that case around, we have the indicator, we see it, and, and here's how it rolls out. When I go into where it's observed, the interesting part is um, with the different signal and noise that we have in Azure uh, security tooling, we actually saw this in several places. So um, I see it in the uh, ASIM authentication uh, matching uh, several times in here within security events on a device. Uh, so I'm starting to get an idea of uh, where it is in the security logs. In VM connection, uh, that's through our service map offering, I can see which computer uh, it's interacting with. Uh, source and destination, looks like it's going inbound. Uh, geolocation and where that uh, IP is geospatially located. In this example, that threat indicator is mapped to Russia. Um, I can see event logs. Uh, these are failed account uh, authentications inbound uh, as far as the event log matching. Um, I'm also seeing some device network events for um, the SQL asset that's going outbound. I can see some third party stuff with the FortiGate uh, infrastructure appliances. Um, starting to put together a lot more information as far as uh, what is this indicator and that's really the desired state of this tab is to be able to look at everything but also drill down into a specific indicator. The last tab that we have is observed threats. So observed threats is uh, putting together a few more advanced correlations in there that we use with AIML. So we're going to look at assets by geolocation and geospatially orient them like you see in the map in the bottom left. Uh, we're going to look at that location over quantity. We're going to look at assets that are targeted and also the indicator details if you want to pivot and drill into them a, a tad bit more. So here I can see there's actually quite a few different uh, areas. So what we look at is um, the indicator cross-reference the geolocation uh, and then look at correlation in the environment to build this map out. So if you know where your business is located, uh, say your US base or European base, and you're starting to see threat indicators from a different geolocation, that can start to draw a picture uh, as far as what you're seeing. Uh, we could drop in um, an IP address. Uh, anything in here, we could filter by an IP address. I could say I only care about US based indicators. Um, uh, quite a few different things. Uh, United was what we're looking for there. Um, just to be able to sort and filter that data. The reason that we put the filter panels in is so you don't have to go in and use the KQL query language, which makes it a lot easier for, uh, for a new user who's onboarding. At any point to where you say, I've seen enough, I need to trigger an investigation. Um, obviously, Azure Sentinel alerts and incidents will have some data for you, and you can crawl through the uh, KQL login query here uh, to explore this a little bit further underneath the visualizations. The last few panels that we'll see below are getting an understanding of which assets are being targeted. Uh, this is the one that we're using in the example uh, SQL cluster. And if you see the spark line over time, you can see it's actually been attacked several times, but looks like late September uh, there was a peak in activity and also again here in about October 3rd. So we're trying to put together the, the who and the when uh, on this one to isolate. So you already get an idea of where an indicator is, what it's targeting. When you start to put together the time-based story, um, you're looking to where you're going to be able to find more telemetry and logging to align that. Uh, the last component is getting an idea of um, what the assets are if I want to pivot into it. So sure, SAP was the one that, uh, that we've looked at. Um, Deep links will take me into the asset instead of having to wonder from flat telemetry, what is this asset? I can dynamically click into it, move me into Azure and where it's located, uh, and, and that takes us through the progression of the event. Awesome. awesome. Uh, jump into Sentinel and have a look at the workbook um, and, and let us know your thoughts through the feedback channel that TJ suggested. So thanks, everyone.